Brothers and sisters, today I have the responsibility of sharing with you something from the guidance of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam about which he said was the most dangerous and the most fearful trial that human beings would face. And the time of its coming would be when people forget about it. As he said, لا يخرج الدجال حتى يذهل الناس عن ذكري وحتى تترك الأئمة ذكره على المنابر. The Dajjal will not appear until people forget about him and the Imams stop mentioning him on the pulpits, on the mimbars. It is time that we don't forget that we be reminded about a Dajjal not as a story, an interesting story, but as a warning for what is to come and what may be amongst us already from our own times. As our young children, our young teenagers are well aware of all of the arch enemies of Spider-Man, Superman, Green Lantern, etc. If you ask them who is the arch enemy, they will give you the names of every last one. And they can tell you all the details about the enemies. But if we ask them about Dajjal, the greatest enemy of humankind, as the Prophet ﷺ had said, that <clears throat> from the time of Adam's creation until the last hour, there will be no trial greater than Dajjal. مَا بَيْنَ خَلْقِ Adam إِلَىٰ قِيَامِ السَّاعَةِ أَمْرٌ أَكْبَرُ مِنَ الدَّجَّالِ this is what the Prophet ﷺ informed us. And the Sahaba reported that he used to teach them about Dajjal and include it in the du'as to be made at the end of our prayers when we say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min adhab jahannam wa min adhab al-qabr wa min fitnat al-mahya wal mamat Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the punishment of hell, the torment of the grave, the trials of living and dying, and from the evil trials of the Antichrist, Al-Masih Al-Dajjal. And they said that he used to teach them this dua the way he taught a surah from the Quran. That is the importance that he gave it. He gave it to them, made sure they learned it and used it. So this is something we should add to our regular prayers as a reminder to us, a daily reminder of the potential danger which lies ahead. And the Prophet Sallallahu had told us that all the earlier prophets had warned of the coming of Dajjal. He said, Allah most great and glorious never sent a prophet without warning their nation about Dajjal. However, the messages which were given to the earlier prophets are now distorted. If we look in the scriptures of the Christians and the Jews, the information they have is garbled. 
It's not clear. It's metaphorical language. Difficult to figure out what it's actually talking about. But because Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was the last messenger to humankind, he gave us the full detailed description of Ad-Dajjal and also the detailed description of what would happen during the time that he conquers this earth. With no details left out. All the necessary details he has given us. So it is very important, especially in these times where we have many scholars or those who claim to be scholars speaking about Dajjal in a metaphorical sense. I'm sure you've all heard at one time or another Dajjal being referred to as the television. The big one eye looking at you. The television. Or some people say it's the UK. The UK, England, which spread its tentacles over the world and enslaved huge swathes of humankind. It was the UK. And America is an extension of the UK. <coughs> or people have explanations with the internet. It's the internet. The internet is a great evil. It contains a lot of evil. And so on and so forth. However, when we listen to what the Prophet Wasallam said, it becomes very clear about who Dajjal is. That he is none of these things that modern speakers, lecturers may say, but that he is an individual, a human being. As Allah put a trial from the world of the jinn, shaitan, leader of corruption, from a spiritual perspective, spiritual world not visible to us, he also created a Dajjal from this physical world who would be a major trial for humankind. And the Prophet ﷺ described him as blind in the right eye. Blind in the right eye. That his right eye would move, twitch, as if unstable. His left eye would also be defective, having a thick film over it, like people who have uh, cataracts, etc., where there's a film which develops over the eye. And the color of it will be greenish, a greenish tinge. The Prophet ﷺ had said, at the Jal, Ainuhu Khadra Kazujaj. That the Jal's eye, that is the left eye, which he would see with, would be greenish like that of glass. Because copper was used in the making of glass in the past. It gave the tinge, a greenish tinge to glass that was made. His complexion would be, would be white. White with a tinge of redness. Ruddy white. Meaning the white of people who are in the northern parts of Europe. Scandinavians and others. Among them the British. So this may be where some people say, well, maybe it's the British. 
he will have a broad forehead. A broad forehead. I mean, where his hairline is, where his eyebrows are, is wide, not narrow. And his neck will be wide. He will not have a small neck, but a wide neck. And he will have a powerful build. And when he stands, when he walks, you know, people who are lifting weights and that, they kind of walk something like this. He will have that same hunch of the muscled individual. And his feet would be set wide apart. He wouldn't be walking as we but people usually when they get bulky like this, they start to walk something like this. So he will be like that. He will have long curly hair, thick curls, so much so that they look like small snakes coiled one on top of each other. He will be sterile. He will not known to have had any children. And the Prophet ﷺ had said, he most closely resembles Abdullah, uh, sorry, Abdul Uzza ibn Qatan from the Mustalaq clan of the Khuza'a tribe who died in pre Islamic times. So he is described as looking like a particular individual. So all these stories about television and countries and internet, etc., we know it's bunk. It's nonsense. The Prophet ﷺ's description is of a human being. He does add that between his eyes will, will be written the word kafir. He said, Maktubun bayna aynay kafirun yaqra'uhu kullu mu'minin katibun aw ghayru katib. Disbeliever Kafir will be written between his eyes, between his two eyes and the forehead. It would be visible to all the believers, whether they were literate or illiterate. Whether they are literate or illiterate. What does that mean? If we write the word Allah, whether a person is literate or illiterate, Muslim, he will know this is the word Allah. In a similar way, the believers will know him. And he will appear in the time of the Mahdi. You may be hearing things about the Mahdi on the internet, claims that he is about to show up, is about to arise. This happens every decade. The word spreads, the Mahdi is coming. And the Prophet Sallallahu had said, even if only one day remains in this life, Allah would lengthen it until a man from my family, this is the Mahdi, appears. His name will be like my name, Muhammad ibn, and his father's name like my father's, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. He will fill the earth with justice and fairness as it was filled with injustice and iniquity. So, if he hasn't appeared again, and he hasn't, claims that Dajjal is amongst us now are obviously false. The Prophet ﷺ had said, when Jerusalem flourishes, Yathrib 
will be in ruins. When Jerusalem flourishes, Yathrib will be in ruins. Yathrib is Medina. Medina to Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's what we called it. Its original name is Yathrib. And Yathrib is included in Greater Jerusalem in the plans of Israel. But when Jerusalem flourishes, Medina will be in ruins. And the great battle will occur. The Christians call it Armageddon. This is the world war of a scale not seen before. And Constantinople will be reconquered, means that we will lose Constantinople. And then it will be taken back. Then the Dajjal will appear. But while that process is taking place, the Prophet ﷺ informed us that there will be three years before Dajjal actually appears. While the Mahdi is leading the struggle, how long that war of Armageddon will take, Allah knows best. But during that period of time, and perhaps prior to it, there will be a global drought developing. The first year of that global drought, Allah will withhold rain from one third of the earth. Allah will withhold rain from one third of the earth. In the second year following it, he will withhold it from two-thirds of the earth. And of course, you can imagine, as soon as rain is withheld, we start to have droughts. This is a serious drought where people start to starve and all of these other things start to happen. Although, in that time, due to technology, maybe starvation will not appear as it appears right now. So we can't really say exactly. But we do know that there will be a drought. And connected to drought is in general starvation, crops dying, etc. Two thirds of the earth by the second year. And the third year, in the third year, then rain will stop completely. There will be no rain anywhere on the face of the earth. So these are clear signs. Very, very clear signs about which we should have no doubt. <coughs> Dajjal is not going to appear until this takes place. And this, our children should know, that they be aware of these signs, to know of the coming, the signs of the coming. Because were it not important, Rasulullah would not have given us these details. We have to believe that it is vital for him to have spent so much time, to give so many details, to include it in our daily prayers. So it is something we should take care about, make sure that our family is aware about, share this information from authentic sources with them, 
And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that care, that concern, that fear of the trials, which would motivate us to ensure that our families know about this and those who are not present here today, our extended families, to keep this knowledge alive. أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذم فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. I ask Allah to forgive us and forgive our families and for us to turn to Him, seeking His forgiveness, as He is the only one who can forgive. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الكريم وعلى آله وصحابه ومن استنى بسنته لا يوم الدين. All praises due to Allah and may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and on all those who follow the path of righteousness until the last day. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم went on to explain to us where on earth will Dajjal appear. And he told us that he would first appear in the land in the east called Khorasan. And this is Khorasan he referred to in his time. Khorasan includes parts of Iran, Turkmenistan, and Afghanistan. There is a village in uh, Iran which came to be known as Khurasan later in the Najafabad rural district, but that is a later naming. The region included Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, and Iran. That he would first appear from there. And he would next appear from a pass between Syria and Iraq. And he would engage in battle from there onwards. His followers would include those from the east. And he mentioned again Khorasan. And uh, they would be accompanied by people whose faces looked flat, or will look flat like beaten iron. That's how he described it. Whose faces will look flat like beaten iron. That, physiologically, if we look at the people, we're talking about people from China. That region, that is the physiological nature of their facial features, is that their faces are flat. It is strange to people in Arabia, that part of the world. <clears throat> and there will be from his followers those who have Muslim names. Many. At one point he will reach the outskirts of Medina and when he reaches there Medina will be shook by three earthquakes and then hundreds of thousands will leave Medina. and join him. These will be people with Muslim names. The Prophet ﷺ called them disbelievers and hypocrites. They would leave and join him. He will have the power given to him by Allah to command the sky to rain and the earth to bear fruit. Remember this is at a time when there was no rain for three years. 
people are in a state of desperation. And this is what makes the trial so great. Because people will be desperate. And he, at that point, will be able to call the sky, call on the sky, tell the sky, rain. And the rain will fall. He will tell the earth, grow. And it will flourish. And he will have with him, following him, a mountain of bread and a mountain of meat that will follow him. How? We don't go into the details. But he will have a huge amount of bread and meat. Main staples of humankind. And of course, those who follow him and accept him will eat. Those who reject him will starve. And he will also have with him what appears to be two rivers. One river will appear white and cool and the other will look like liquid fire, like larva, liquid metal. And if the, the Prophet ﷺ said that if you are commanded to jump into one of these two, jump into the fire. Because he's Dajjal. What will appear to you to be evil, the fire, will be his. That will be paradise. Whereas what appears cool, white, flowing waters, that will be hell. It will be his paradise, but his paradise will be hell. And the treasures of the earth where he goes from land to land and he will go around the world like wind-driven rain, the Prophet ﷺ had said. And wherever he enters a land, the treasures of the earth of that land will come out to him, for him. And he will do what appears to be miraculous works. Among them, he will call people. And he gave the example, Prophet ﷺ gave the example of a Bedouin. He will call on this Bedouin in front of the people and say to him, if I were to resurrect your parents, would you testify that I am your Lord? Because his da'wah is not to being a messenger of Allah. That's not his da'wah. And the Prophet ﷺ referred to Dajjalun, who would come, each one claiming that they were messengers of Allah, like Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, of the Ahmadis, Qadianis, and others. Baha'u'llah, from Iran, of the Baha'is, etc. Those are Dajjalun. But this Dajjal, he will be calling people to accept him as Allah. So he will say to this Bedouin, if I were to resurrect your parents, would you testify that I am your Lord? And the Bedouin will say, yes. If you brought my parents back to life, I would bear witness you are my Lord because only my Lord can do that. Then, the Jal will call on two jinns that will take the form of his parents. And they will say, follow him, my little son, for he is your Lord. 
See how many of us would pass that test. That's what we have to ask ourselves. Where will we be if this time comes? And he will cut individuals in half, walk between their halves, then tell the halves to come together, and they will come together. The person will stand up, smiling, running to him. But there will be among them one who will say to him, after the Jal has cut him in half and brought him back together again and asked him to accept him as his Lord, he will say, No, I am only more certain that you are false. And he will call out to the people, Oh, people, he won't be able to do this after anyone. After me. He won't be able to do this to anyone after me. And Dajjal will grab him and try to cut off his head, will fail. Then he will throw him into that river of fire. He will appear to be burnt into nothingness. But the Prophet ﷺ had said, he will have fallen into paradise. And he said, Hada Adamun Nasi Shahadatun in the Rabbil Alameen. He is the greatest martyr in the sight of the Lord of all the worlds. And he will rule the earth for 40 days, the first of which will be the length of a year, the second of which will be the length of a month, the third of which will be the length of a week, then the rest of the days will be like our days. And he will fight. The Mahdi, that's the struggle. He will corner the forces of the Mahdi in Jerusalem. And when he is about to finish him off, Prophet Isa salam, will descend. Will join forces with the Mahdi, lead them in prayer in Bayt al-Maqdis, and he will turn and he himself will kill the Mahdi, sorry, kill Dajjal with his own hands. And that will be the end. But this, as I said, story is a true story. It's not fiction. It is a true story which Prophet Muhammad has informed us about for a purpose. For us, on one hand, to consider the trials that people will face and how we would respond to those trials. Also for us to inform our families, our communities of this danger which lies ahead and to be also ready that and know how to approach these trials. The Prophet ﷺ had said, the one who memorizes the last 10 verses of Surah Al Kahf, it will be a protection for him to read Surah Al Kahf regularly also. To seek refuge in formal prayer as the Prophet ﷺ taught. To remember Allah often. And to flee from him. Imran ibn Hussein had said, whoever hears of Dajjal should flee far away from him. For by Allah a man will come to him thinking himself to be a firm believer and end up following Dajjal because of the confusion Dajjal would create in him. So, my brothers and sisters, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep a Dajjal in our memory, in our family's memory, in our community's memory, as protection for us from a time to come 
where we would be tested on a level that we could not imagine. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our parents and ourselves and to make the graves of our parents gardens from paradise rather than pits from hell. And that we would also die following them and entering into gardens of paradise rather than pits from hell.